Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Lema Ultimate. We're finally here after Lana Wait. We're in a formation lap in, of course, the Ferrari 499P. I am super excited to finally be in a racing game with this beautifully licensed car. We're just about to take off here. Well, one more chicane and then we'll just about to take off. Here we go. Green, green, let's go. Let's we'll see if I can duck up on the inside. Ooh, what a move. Got a BMW on the inside. No, it was a Peugeot. I take that back. That was in its special Le Mans livery. And we're just on the rear end at the Porsche 963. Turn our traction control up here. Tires are still a little bit cold. The oversteer snaps are pretty bad there. Ah, so, to give my first impressions of this game, with everything in life, there's some good and there's some bad. So, unfortunately, let's start with a little bit of the bad. This video is actually going to be a discussion about how well this game runs on the Steam Deck. As you guys all know, I love my Steam Deck dearly, and that's my primary gaming device these days. So I load up the game and it just black screens and it immediately crashes. So I do a little bit of uh, some research and it turns out that the developers have said that there will be Steam Deck support eventually. They've got some more bigger fish to fry at the moment, which understandable. So I try loading into this game on my computer. And I've got some display problems where I'm getting black screens here. Whenever I click my mouse button, like the screen turns black and I have to do some weird finagling to be able to get into the settings, change them so I can actually see the screen. From there, the settings, the, the menus and whatnot are pretty intuitive and they're pretty minimalistic. And I, I do like that. It's pretty neat. But there are pages and pages and pages of settings that you got to go through first to set up the event, set up your car, how long the race is going to be, what type of race classes you want to be up against, uh, AI difficulty, AI aggression, all that kind of fun stuff. You get into the race, and for some odd reason, like let's just say you have a crash, you try to restart the race, and it just says that you DNF, and there's no way to quit out of the game. So you have to like force quit it. So you go back to the main menu to adjust your settings and all of them have changed to weird random values. So you set up a 24 minute race. It's now a 60 minute race. You check it again a little bit later. It's now a 40 minute race. You check it again. It's now three hours. I don't know why none of those settings. The only settings that did save was the course that you last raced on and the car you last raced on. Otherwise, a lot of the other settings did happen to change in between launches, which is odd, to say the least. And the other thing, too, is every time you load into a race, even on an SSD, the loading time was like a solid minute. Furthermore, this game, as we've all discussed, is based off of R Factor 2, so a lot of R Factor 2 bugs are still with us. So the physics of R Factor 2 were good. It doesn't seem like a lot of those good qualities have carried over. Some more prominent sim racers have discussed a disconnect between the car and the road. Even on traction control 11, oversteer is trying to kill you. Some of them have witnessed what they can only describe as rear wheel steering. So like you're driving a forklift and yeah, I don't, I can't say that I've agreed with that, but I can agree with the tires trying to kill me at all times. I'm trying to turn the best as I can and there's just no grip whatsoever. 
weird. And furthermore, it is for R Factor 2, so R Factor 2 graphics carried over, but that game is what, 10 years old at this point? So it's a little bit a little bit sad to see that there weren't many graphical improvements. There are some, I'll agree. So we've got that laundry list of stuff out of the way. The good, then. When you drive in this game, apart from the traction control, all the other stuff you just happen to put behind you, the frame rate stutters, all the issues that he had trying to load up the game and get it all set up. When you get into this game and you finally get a good race going, you, am, you are bombarded by some of the best sounds in a racing game that I've witnessed so far. It is phenomenal. It's intoxicating. They're aggressive. They're violent. They're realistic. They're accurate. And they make you feel immersed. And that's all that you can ask for in a racing game nowadays is to feel thoroughly immersed in the game that you're in. Furthermore, the force feedback in my mind he is superb need for speed unbound it basically doesn't exist unless if you crash and then like the quick release clicks around aggressively forza motorsport it's really muted you feel disconnected again unless you crash it clanks around a lot Gran Turismo 7 is also similarly good. It's very detailed, but the thing that I found an issue with is even with the 8 Newton meter power supply upgrade for the Fnatic GT DD Pro, it just doesn't feel like that it's using all the Newton meters of torque. It feels like it's still using 5 Newton meters. It doesn't quite feel to the level of vibration that you're expecting. This game, however, the force feedback is detailed. There were a number of times that when the car started slipping be out behind me, you could feel it. You could feel the traction being lost in the steering wheel, so you could actually recover pretty quickly. Going over a curb is violent, as you would expect. And overall, it just feels very detailed, and it feels, it feels really good, genuinely. And furthermore, the fact that it is an officially FIA World Endurance Championship licensed game, we get pretty much all of the cars from the 2023 season. I think there are a couple GTE cars that we're missing out on. But the LMDH category, LM, yeah, LMDH category with all the hyper cars, and the LMP2 category, they're all here. And those are the cars that you normally don't get in racing games. You get, in most racing games, like I said, a Corsa. Well, it's a game obviously based around GT3 cars. So you get all of those. Gran Turismo 7, you get a couple of hyper cars, but they're from a while ago. And you only get like one or two of them. And then a plethora of GT3 cars. Automobiliesta 2 has like half of the hypercars, half the GT3 cars, maybe an LMT, LMP2 car. So we're getting close with that. But that's all DLC on top of a traditionally $40 game. This game, $33. So they're not breaking the bank. They're not telling you it's a whole brand new $70 game. It's only a $33 game, which I enjoy greatly. And like I said, it is a game discussing very recently the last season of the World Endurance Championship. So you have the Toyotas, you have the Vanwell, you have the Glickenhaus, you have the Ferrari. So like I said, as many issues that this game has, especially very late, I imagine, I recall hearing 
that they had announced that this game was actually early access, which I felt was a very sly way of saying, we're not actually finished with this game. We don't think that we are hitting our development targets. So at the last minute, we're going to say it's early access. So whenever you complain about the game, we'll just say, well, it's just early access versus, you know, hitting your actual deadlines. But, you know, I digress. I'm feeling fairly cynical these days about video game development, especially with the recent news being reported from uh, Forza using contracted out landscape artists for a maximum 18 months. That's a different story for a different video. I don't... I, I don't ugh, video game industry sucks these days. But this game... I am slow. I am struggling to control this car because it is a monster. And I'm enjoying myself. There are a very few amount of games that you get this level of enjoyment out of after struggling so hard to get the damn thing to run. I mean, Forza Motorsport was kind of the example of it took a lot to get the game running but when you get there it's like why am I even playing this? This is boring. This is exhilarating. The thing that I love as well is that this has accurate flag simulation. Accurate well accurate stewarding. So all that kind of fun stuff of like, hey, you cut the track, we're going to tell you that you cut the track and actually give you some penalties for that versus other video games where it's, eh, we can't necessarily confirm you cut the track, even though it hard cuts to you just cutting across the main part of a grassy field. <laughs> so this game, I enjoy it. It's, like I said, the stewarding the flag simulation, it's not new, it's not innovative. It's been out a while in a couple of other video games. But to have the FIA World Endurance Championship of the last season with all seven courses, with all these great cars on it, just being immersed in the way that they drive, the way that they feel, the way that they look, the way that sound. I am super excited to play more of this game. Yes, it's early access and there's only two modes. There's just the basic racing weekend where you make your own custom event and you kind of go from there. The lack of a career mode is a little bit sad, but it doesn't take a whole lot to just make a custom career, per se, where you just go through the all seven events. Oh, that's another thing. <laughs> the damage simulation. Uh, this is a struggle. <laughs> uh... My car doesn't look too bad from out here, but yeah, this is... <laughs> uh, that puts me out. That absolutely puts me out. I cannot drive like this. Uh, Lama Ultimate, everyone. Much like the real one, you can never expect to know what happens in any of the races. And much like the actual race, sometimes stuff happens. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we've got probably some more Lama Ultimate content coming on up. I definitely want to review it on Steam Deck when we finally get Steam Deck compatibility. So that might not be for a little bit yet, but I definitely will be uh, coming back to that at some point. But of course, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.